Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Outcast Haven podcast. Tonight, we're going to talk some DBS. This is episode eight of our podcast. And I'm joined tonight by Robert, a.k.a. Illiterate. Quick PSA. Robert had one heck of a week, decided to use his podcast as his forum to air some grievances. So I'm going to do my best here to censor, make sure nothing sneaks by. Fair warning now. Also, quick note that the Dane that they're referring to playing Zamasu is not me. That's another Dane from our locals here. But, hope you enjoy the podcast. I was on tilt this week when I made that Facebook post. And he would like to apologize. And I'm also joined I'm not apologizing by... for shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also joined by Mr. Michael Berg, a.k.a. Bergie. I might have caused said tilt. He's dead to He's me. He's responsible for the tilt. So tonight should be a good episode. <laughs> So we're going to start with some housekeeping. Um, we talked in our last DBS podcast about a friendly wager made by our own Robert and uh, our local Dane, and they were playing a matchup of Yamcha versus Zamasu. And we were all really excited because we got the message from Robert after game one that he won. And then uh, games two and three happened. So Robert, give us a quick results tally and how it went. All right. So... Uh, game one, I think I was a little bit sneaky on uh, Dane with Yamcha. I, I don't think he really took Yamcha all that serious. Um, and I was able to um, kind of just burn him down um, after playing a little bit of defense, um, build up a board, and uh, and kind of keep, keep him off his game. Uh, when I talked to Blake, or strategy was trying to get rid of Zeno, uh, which unfortunately didn't happen in any of the games, knowing how much Zamasu kind of relies on him. So we weren't able to execute our game plan. But when I was able to build my board with Dependable Mom Bulma, Yamcha the Lawless, um, and kind of get that extra card draw, it was enough to kind of push through the damage and, and get the burn done with um, Goku the Pure Hearted. Uh, unfortunately, in games two and three, uh, you know, Dane kind of adjusted his play and understood that he can't let me have cards. And so uh, Bulma died a lot, which was sad. Um, and then he Gogeta, what is it, Peerless Fusioned me both it's games? Gogeta 10. Gogeta 10? Yeah, because it's a 10 cost and also set 10. Yeah. Gogeta the Beautiful, that's what I call him. It's the gorgeous card. So. I, I'm pretty so sure his name is Peerless or... Fusion or something like that. Peerless Fusion, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> what are you even talking about? Um, uh, which he happened to draw into both games and hit me on turn five with, which didn't feel all that great. And uh, yeah, so I got Gogeta two games back to back. So unfortunately, I did lose. And so keeping my word, I will... Um, recite the Zamasu speech to be fair we might be doing a we might be doing this again later where I can actually stand up and act it out for everybody but it's kind of raining outside in Minneapolis and and it's cold and nobody wants to be outside right now so um, I will recite the speech um, as payment to Dane for winning the Yamcha Zamasu challenge um, but I did take the the win with Yamcha and so you know put respect in his name and uh, without further ado, here we go. My form is justice. And my form is the world. Worship me. Give praise unto me. Me, the beautiful, the sublime. Me, the invincible, the almighty divine. All hail Dane Reichenbach. How was that? Huh? Huh? Pretty good? No, 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 no. We forgot the bit where right afterwards it plays a commercial for like bargain bin food or something like that. Why? I just I just personally like the fact that like that's I feel like that's probably how Robert was feeling after game one. Like he wanted to that speech was, was ready to come out, but only to end with like Yamcha. Uh, but then you know it didn't end with Yamcha, it unfortunately it ended with Zamasu. So I appreciate Robert being a man of his word, though. So I, I think that's yeah. that's pretty great. In full clarity, it was the meta 
Zamasu build with all the cards like Obuni and whatnot and Gogeta, yeah, clearly. He also I, did charge multi, though, like three times in the first game, like off of his Zeno. Which felt terrible. Yeah, but I mean, you still get you still get effects off it, which is oh, you, of course. You, you can't be, yeah, can't you, be too what, upset about that. Why, why you gotta Why you gotta go find the itty bitty <laughs> flaws, Bert? Like this is why no, this is why nobody likes you. You play Invoker and what? then you do shit like this. <laughs> I'm getting bullied. That's I'm right. That's right. I mean, I mean, it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna get back to. I think we're gonna get back to Birdie taking taking some some heat later, probably as we continue to talk. Oh yeah, I'm, just, I'm still it. mad. Even more. We we've still got mad. The housekeeping. We've got the, the housekeeping out of the way. Stop this. Uh, now that we've got the housekeeping out of the way with the uh, Yamcha Zamasu results and debt payment, we're gonna move on and we're gonna talk about some uh, secret rare reveals. We're gonna talk about all of them tonight. Uh, I kind of set us up in an order where I think we're gonna talk about them in terms of probably what I think they are tiered as personally. You guys can disagree with me. We're going to start with the Vegito Unison SCR. Obviously, the first of its kind, a, a, an SCR that's a Unison, which is super cool. I'm going to read through it real quick. It is has the uh, has the tags. It's ultimate, double strike. Its permanent is this card can't attack if it has three or fewer markers on it. It's a black card, so you can play it for one if you want. I don't know that anyone would do that necessarily, but uh, if somebody wants to do that, they can live their best life. The activate main plus one is you may place X cards from your energy in their owner's drop areas. If you do, place X cards from your drop area in your energy in rest mode. And then it's plus minus zero activate main is to pay one red, one yellow, one blue, one green. Draw three cards. This card gets plus 15,000 power and it's triple attack for the turn. And your opponent can only activate counter skills one more time for the turn. And it has 25,000 power. So... Like I said, we're doing it in the order that I think. I think this, in in the tier of these three, personally, I think this is the lowest one only because it's super specific and it doesn't do anything inherently broken. I think the double strike is crazy, obviously, on a 25k body. The fact that it has to have four markers in order to just swing is pretty prohibitive in a deck that is running rainbow. And it feels like a lot of things have to align for this thing to be scary. And the fact that it's a it's got the ultimate tag means you obviously only run one in your deck, so nobody has to worry about the typical unison deal where you got to get them two below because if they tuck, they can still get their effect. What do you think, Birdie? What's like? What's your opinion of this one? I think it's genuinely bad. Like, I don't think it's good at all. I th- I know some people are like, play it in self control Android twenty one, but you'd just be better off doing so much other stuff. You'd be better off running the SS four ultimate, the Vegeta one. I think that the plus one is kind of niche, but I think it could be all right for getting blue energy for something like Bean. But even then, it comes in rest mode, so it's not overly useful. And the plus zero, while it's cool, it costs four to do, and you need to have four markers on it in in order to get the six damage on table thing, because it's triple attack, right? Triple attack double? Yeah, triple attack, double strike. Yeah, plus 15. I... I think the, I mean, I think the the plus one is probably good design, to be honest, because it doesn't do anything broken until it gets the four markers and you can pay the four. The plus one, I think the saving grace of that is that it lets you set up the activate main to get your triple attack because you can you can charge whatever color early as long as you can get those other colors in your drop and you're able to set up the next turn where you go in. So I think it was probably well thought out as far as making sure it functioned well. I don't necessarily, I don't personally love it. I think a lot of people talked about it in, uh, talked about it in AOD, but I don't know why you wouldn't just run sell Zeno. And I know Robert probably would agree. Why, why, why run this card when you can run Zeno? Always run Zeno, right, Robert? All hail sell Zeno. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to, I, I don't know how to use it yet, but I really want this SCR. So, you know, if I get one, I'll happily trade either of you um, for this one. Mm-hmm. Yes, I don't know how I'm going to use it yet, but I feel like there are enough rainbow cards um, that you could make it work. I know, and again, I think AOD is the easy one with people already playing kind of that Goku Strength of Legends um, in there and having kind of the rainbow build for it. I do think that, yeah, you wouldn't play it early, but if you played it on 
you know, turn four and you had had negates to, to keep it up or you played it on turn five just to get the um, be able to use the minus. You know, it, it is a game finisher, and that's what I kind of look for. Um, we'll talk about, obviously, Baby Hatch later, which I think is good. I think it's better than the Green Ape. But I feel like the Green Ape and Baby Hatch, they're playing defense, and I just don't want my SCR to be defensive. I want my SCR to smash someone's face, and that's yeah. just me. So I have no interest in Sin Shenron, Baby Hatch, or the uh, Green Ape. So I, I like the unison idea. I do think the big drawback is that you can only have one in the deck and you're not able to kind of keep it up with extra markers. Um, but to I, I me, that's kind of the having, biggest. Yeah. Not issue. having a search mechanic for it is tough because not being not being able to guarantee your SCR, not having ways to... Typically, there are just ways to cycle and find a lot of the SCRs that are game finishers or they're in decks that have have a pretty consistent draw mechanic to get to them. This one kind of being like stuck in that cycle of like if the deck just doesn't draw, it doesn't draw, so then it's probably a bad SCR for it. Or maybe that deck's just not good anyway. But I think the the issue with the thing is just having it be a one, having it be a unison, meaning that you can't protect it by standing it up. You know, there's no way to, to do anything with it other than, you know, like just it just it, once it's out there, it's vulnerable. And normally I don't think people would do a ton of swinging into 25K um, unisons if it, there was other ones. But I think this one, you obviously are just going to keep it at that comfortable level of always being out of reach of being able to pull off the, the four markers. And it's just, just that's the way it is. I personally, I think that the second one we're going to talk about uh, is probably maybe the one that Robert and I disagree on because I think secret rares, I don't think defense is bad. I think what, what they did in set nine was make secret rares insane. And now they're kind of ticking them back to being what they probably should be, which is, in my opinion, secret rares should be win more cards, not win from behind cards. Um, can I say one more thing quick before we move yeah, on? Yeah, for sure. Um, I just... Thinking it through, I just remembered you can't actually run the SS4 Vegeta in self control 21, so I think that actually probably is the best SCR. My bad, rules clarification. I'm stupid. <laughs> You're right. Hey, I mean, you, you caught it now, we don't have to do a, a go back. Oh, thing. gosh, <laughs> no, that would suck. So, the second one we'll talk about is the, the baby Hatchiac, saying destroyer. It's an eight cost, it has just the ultimate tag, it has a counter attack. If you have three or more energy, negate the attack, then play this card. Your opponent can't attack for the turn. The permanent, if this card would be removed from your battle area, remove it from the game instead. The other permanent, if your leader card is mono blue, you can choose one card in your hand and discard it instead of paying this card's energy cost when activating its counter scale from hand. It's a 40k body. I, I think, personally, like I think this is the perfect SCR for mono blue because... If you gave Mono Blue a real boss monster, something in the vein of like a Broly or a Celzino, I think then nobody plays anything but Blue. I think you have a definitive tier zero deck probably. I don't know which one it is, but maybe you have like three tier zero Blue decks because Blue with a boss monster, because Blue ramps so hard and has the ability to ramp, I think you're just asking for trouble. So giving it something that lets people go all in on a turn and still have a way to get out of the next turn and then play through the game is a really cool thing. Because I think if you tap out to play a bunch of scary stuff or a couple scary things or whatever you're doing, if you tap out to do multiple things in a turn in blue, if you, you know, if you, you just die, like you can just die. And this allows you to basically buy a turn and then have another shot at it on your next turn, which I think is really cool. I think it's a cool design to be able to give blue a toolboxy card. It's just like, honestly, I think green. I think it makes sense that they didn't give mono green a, a pure strategy where a deck like Dredge Coup, if you gave Dredge Coup a good, like a really solid SCR that could get out relatively easy, I think then you have a really troubled deck. You have a problem deck that just runs around and mauls people because it does everything else well too. Blue does such a good job of defending itself that you just give it an extra turn and I think it's good. I don't think you want to give it something else because just like green already has so many toolboxy ways to handle you, 
I think blue has so many toolboxy ways to handle you that if you give it a definitive boss monster that fits it, I think it just wrecks people's faces too much. I will say, if I'm if I'm being honest with myself, this is probably going to be the chase SCR, just given how popular blue is right now and how good it is. You know, just shutting down someone for an entire turn, uh, which blue does enough as is. I'm not quite sure they needed another thing to do that, but this is a hard, hard shutdown, right? And it's it, to your point, I can play, you know, whatever the whatever I want, and then people can think that they finally have me. Um, because I'm tapped out, and then I, I drop this sucker, right? And then just effectively pretty much end um, their turn. It's not as bad as an entire, um, you know, time walk um, where your opponent can't do anything because at least they can spend their energy. But, mm -hmm. you know, if they swing later in their turn as opposed to earlier in their turn and they kind of, like, spend all their energy bringing out battle cards instead of um, kind of swinging and, and waiting, then you it could set them up for a really, really hard time. So uh, if I'm being honest with myself, this is, I think it's going to be the best SCR from the set, just given um, the time walk nature. I just don't have to like what it does. <laughs> I mean, I think it's the most, I, I think it's probably like weirdly enough, I think it's the least niche one. Like it's not locked into a specific strategy, unlike the other ones are, and even a lot of the SCRs like from this last set, there this is probably the most universal, even though it's only mono blue leaders that get the effect. I still think with given the fact that we have two really good popular mono blue leaders in, in that are currently running around the meta in Vegito and Zamasu, I think giving this to like the new GT and you know any other mono blue decks that people want to run, I think you just end up with a really cool ability to to have something that is pretty universal in blue to be a secret rare, which I just don't think blue has. Um, I also think that it adds a really interesting dynamic playing against mono blue, because if you think about it, one extra turn that you know your opponent's tapped out and you just go all in is one more turn they can play another Obuni. And that's like, yeah, forget a swings, booty, you're gonna get swings. turning the tighted, which is a verb. <laughs> yeah, that's, fair. that's fair as well. So <laughs> that late. Um, I will say, Robert, you said this card is better than the green monkey ape. I think they're both really good. I think I like the fact that Bandai is moving towards more of a generic SCR for each color. And I think if they continue this trend, it'll be really interesting to see what they do for both red for red. And have they done one for black? I don't think they've done one for black. Black doesn't have a true one just because I think you can't. It's hard to give black. A, oh, wait, I, um, I, I, yeah. I do think that the interesting thing that they're bringing out in this set is having specified cost on black cards and mm -hmm. overrun cards. I think that's a really cool little thing that, I mean, we're not in, in, we're not necessarily going to talk specifically about the black battle cards in the set, but I do think that's a really cool thing to lock some cards into black that normally everybody would just run if they wanted something. You know, a lot of times people just run things like, you know, Mira Creator Absorb because it's just a seven pay one over round black card. You know, there's nothing spe special about it. But if you had a specified one black cost on those cards, it makes a big difference in their playability. And I think this card is just really cool because it will, to Bernie's point, create some really interesting interactions where you have to play some mind games with your opponent. Like if you have this card in hand and you've got three life and you're holding another negate do you just negate with something else first to try to bait out their energy so that way they can't topo you in response or something like if you're playing red or somebody who's going to play topo like it's an interesting counterbalance where do you try to get them to spend all their energy by not using this right away because maybe they swing with their leader just to check for this card you know what i mean like in a, in a strategy sense like maybe you swing into blue with a card just to test and see if they have this card and if they'll drop it. If they drop it, cool, leave all your energy standing. Hopefully you can do the same thing back to them to lock a turn. But if you don't play it right away or if they don't play it right away, then you have to make a decision. Are they are they messing with you? So then are you spending two energy to play a battle card and then swinging with that battle card? And you're having to slow play turns to see if you can bait this card out. And then as a blue player, you know, knowing when to play it, it's that skill cap thing where I think... That, to me, is probably the best part about these SCRs is they become high skill cap cards instead of just spam the board and hope you can drop something that just wins. And I think that that's, to me, that I, I prefer a game 
where it's skill intensive and rewards the most skilled player, not a game that rewards the person who best stands the board and can drop Zeno. Because I think sometimes that's an issue is like, if you just play a deck that efficiently plays a ton of battle cards and the person you're playing just doesn't draw into something to balance those cards, you just like, cool, I win because I have a big scary. And I love the idea of like skill intensive cards that say like, this card is not just a guaranteed, like, I want to win next turn, so I play it. You have to be careful when you play it, because if you just leave your opponent sitting on four energy and they're playing red, or and they have topo, like, if they double topo you, like, they just ended your life right back, because you let them keep all their energy standing, because you over-exerted your defense too fast. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, I'm just going to say, Bergy, this is way better than the Green Ape. The Green Ape, Disagree. like... Disagree. Disagree. The Green Ape kills one <laughs> battle card. This one's like, hey, yeah, your turn's over. Hang out later. No, but, like, what about just the utility that the Green Ape offers? Like, your opponent is playing the slow game and has Invoker, so they have Vegeta. You need a way to just deal with it without just caring about what your opponent's doing. Because if you're going to deal with something with Vegeta, like a battle card, they just have Royal Condemnation every time. Like, you just auto-assume they have it. And... You can even do it on their turn three when they swing with their leader to discard and draw and awaken and everything to draw all the, half their deck out and just surge and look at your hand. And they have they know that it's going to be there because they see it. And just that's only up because this great. card doesn't work against Invoker because you're never going to swing at me. Like that's one deck, dude. I'd much rather negate all damage for the turn. Would you? Than also, here's a question though. Pop your stupid Invoker Vegeta, of which then you'll no, but the play ape can Beerus. Win games. The ape can close. I think that that is. A little bit of a exchange, whereas Hatch just says your turn is over. The ape has the utility of blowing something up, but also can just say I win the game. Like I play this, I swing a couple times. If you have negates, great. If you don't, cool. Um, actually, wait, can you do the auto from the battle area, or is it just from hand? I think it's from oh, ape. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if you, if it just says combo or it says combo. You have the card? <laughs> Pull it up, dude. I don't have the card. It's over in my backpack. My backpack's halfway across my room. <laughs> I think I think the underrated thing about the baby hatch, I think a couple things that I think are interesting with the baby hatch. Number one, um, it gets played. I don't it feels like nobody notices that. You're like, they're like, but it's only a single strike. You're like, yeah, but it's still an eight cost forty K. Like it's, yeah, it's, not, it's big number. It's, big number. it's not that easy to deal with either. Like it's still a big body to throw at somebody. So then maybe blue just runs more chompas. You know, you throw some chompas in blue, and then all of a sudden, now you got a 40k double strike because you're blue and you're energy efficient. So you make it a you, you chompa, then sends you being back up. You got all your energy back, and now you're swinging 45 double. You know, it's like it's still a scary card. I mean, 40 is nothing to laugh at in this game. Like, that's a lot of cards to combo out of a single strike. <laughs> like, if, that's why Bibbity is busted. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's getting single strikes to death. I mean, 40k is huge. But I also think that um, people just undervalue you know it's it's the size of it when it comes down because you're literally playing it for discarding a card like that's a pretty good exchange like if i told you you could discard a card to negate all attacks and play a 40k body almost everybody would be fine but for some reason they're like well it's a secret right they're like no i hate everything and life is meaningless it's like what else are you going to play in blue like i mean what's the other secret rare that's better than this in blue hey the so dbs is like baseball man we're here for the dingers all right we ain't sure. here. We ain't here for golden <laughs> gloves, all right? My name is Robert, and I'm here to hit dingers. <laughs> <laughs> Time for a dinger derby. That's I, right. I just think. I mean, I think even even the Gogeta, as scary as the 45k triple strike can be. I mean, let's be honest. Like that that card is can be super prohibitive. Like at, as the offensive player, because if I play that and then I survive and I have an I draw into an Obuni, guess what? I can't play. If I, if I shut your entire turn down with this card and I draw into an Obuni, now you're going to deal with this and you're going to deal with Obuni. So you're about to be mega sad. And it's like, I just brought double sadness upon you. <laughs> but I think... Which is like, why Blade plays this game and plays blue exclusively because he wants to make us all sad. <laughs> mega sad. I bring double sadness. I rain it down from the heavens. Um, I, think, I think one thing I like about this card, I love that they put the remove from battle area, remove from game instead of, like, the drop, because you know somebody would find a way to recycle it. I don't know how you would even do that, but I'm sure Negated somebody would skills find a way. then bounce it back to your hand. It Our, requires more steps, but it's doable. My, yeah, my, you can do some weird thing. My biggest issue here, and, you know, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but, like, 
there's like so many zones now, right? There's remove from game, there's warp, there's drop. The new Broly makes you warp, but you have to remember what you warped because you get those back at the end of your mm-hmm. turn. So then like... I mean, I got so much crap that's, like, not, like, on the board anymore. I, I feel like they need to scale it scale it back a little bit or something like that. Like, stop making up stuff. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the, the work back to hand thing is a little weird, which we'll talk about in a second. I think the only other thing I want to note about the hatch is that Bandai was really smart by not giving it the hatch tag. Can we just mm-hmm. – in the like, I, I think – Hopefully everybody notices that by now, but the fact that it didn't get hatched means it doesn't get the nine drop triple attack on top of it for free. So I just would like to clarify that while everyone likes to complain relentlessly about poor poor uh, poor game design by Bandai, in spite of the fact that they have like a ninety nine point five percent track record for good game design, people always pick the things they hate. Can we point out the fact that they were smart enough not to just put hatch? They just avoided it, and it like it resolved an issue that they didn't have to errata, which I love because I hate errata. Mm-hmm. Also, so bad shout out for eradicating the draw Ape Eunice in. All right, all you people who are like it shouldn't be eradicated. <laughs> like you should just be able to draw Ape every turn. Like no, sit down. Yeah, that's especially terrible. In blue. Yeah, especially in blue. Like, where like I go to I go to three energy and I draw two and then I beam back up and I just like now I have two energy and I have two more cards and it's like you're constantly plussing every turn and just like it, it that that card would be bananas if it was two for two yeah do i think four is is kind of bad yeah but in blue you're energy efficient and you can get all your energy back up anyway and you can cheat out energy and all this other stuff so like i think they were thinking that with blue and veggie t and zeno and stuff you might be able to pull it off i don't know how it is at four but it's definitely a hell effing no at two Thank you. Yeah, um, if, if it was if it was two two, like that would be just busted. Like, because mm-hmm. as as much as the ape can, like, especially as much complaining as the community does about the ape at times, where it's like it needs banned, it needs errated, it needs locked to a color, and then all of a sudden they show that blue thing and it goes to like, and they're like, no, 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 it's actually supposed to be two colored and two unspecified, and then like people are like, oh, well, that makes it terrible. And it's like, you're probably the same person who was complaining relentlessly about the ape, but you were only complaining about the ape because it's expensive, and you weren't complaining about this ape because you thought you could get your hands on it, which is just continued proof that in this game, the people who complain are the people who are broke. It smells like broke up in here is what it is. <laughs> Damn. Hey, I'm broke. Quit me. Oh, like, me in the complaint. No, nah, man, you got the AirPods. Do you even know what that meme is about, man? <laughs> Come on, son. Dude, I go to Tatino Greece. That place is like rich person. Wait, no, air quotes. Rich person school. Thank you. Those air, yeah. I, if you couldn't hear the air quotes, you might need to get your ears checked. It's it's but, like, it's the pizza school. It's the pizza school. Tatino's like, pizza. You know, it's like it's like it's like stereotypical rich kid school. For anybody but, like, who no wants to know there. the proper way to eat a Tatino's pizza. First of all, you should bake it <laughs> and <mouth>. whatever. <laughs> no, 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 man. You gotta fold it like a taco. Taco. It's a right? taco. A taco. Pizza. Yeah, that's the old. That's the that's the real taco pizza because you can get any bad toppings. You can get that fake pepperoni that's like zero percent meat but somehow tastes like pepperoni. Yep. <laughs> give it. A, see, my old school used to give us cubed pepperoni. Like I'm not even kidding. They just gave you a cube and said put this on the pepperoni. pizza. That's disgusting. No, it was just one cube and you had to like, like cut <laughs> it into bits and put it on your own pizza. That's disgusting. <laughs> Eat right, one. So... <laughs> So now we've, oh, like we've officially gone off the rails. Now we're gonna now we're gonna move into Sorry. the last SCR, and then we're also we'll we'll lead us into the archetypes coming in this set, which will lead us into the Robert rant, I'm sure. Um, so the last the last SCR is the SS4 Broly, the Great Destroyer. Um, so it's an ultimate. It's uh, got barrier, which is always disgusting, and it's got double strike. Then as an activate main, it says choose one mono red Saiyan card with an original power of 35 in your battle area and place it in its owner's drop area. Play this card from your hand, then choose up to one of your mono red leader cards and it gets plus 10,000 power until the start of your next turn. I would like to point out, until the start of your next turn, not the end of your double turn. Double bean. So double bean through your opponent's turn. That's disgusting. Permanent, so all cards in your opponent's leader area, battle area, and combo area get minus 5,000 power and combo power. 
and it's a 40k. I would just like to point out how disgusting the permanent is, and that's probably the thing that's going to feel the absolute worst, is when you forget that permanent, and you just, like, big swing 40 double, and you're just like, it's cool, I've got, like, 12 cards in hand, and you're like, guess what? Half of those, no. all of those cards, but two, are zero, zero combo power. <laughs> just um, mega ultimate super sadness. I love the fact that this makes Bibbidi a minus two super combo. That's at the start, of course. Yes. Like, it'll go at the start, of course. I think that's great. <laughs> at the start. At the start, of course. Can I go? Yes. This card is amazing. This card is the closest <laughs> we've gotten to a set nine. Yeah. This, yeah. this card is dumb. This card is amazing. This card says, if it hits table, I win the game. There is no way you will win on the crackback, and you can't win from then on. The plus 10k boost makes it almost impossible for almost any card to hit you, and then they get the minus 5k like debuff. For the entire time yeah. the card is on the table, it just is disgusting and it has barrier. The only thing I can think of that's like a problem is God Sealing technique, but you're running Broly, so you just discard their entire hand and then yeah. swing into their Zeno. I think it's it's definitely like when you look at the cards, it's really good. Number one, I think what's cool about it is in true uh, Dragon Ball Super Bandai fashion, I love that they made another gorgeous broly secret rare if i was a collector like i would you know probably want to sell my soul for this i'm not a collector i'm a player so like i sell anything that's worth money so if i'm not going to play it i'm going to sell it so uh for all of you that are like dying for this card just know that if i open it i will straight sell it because i'm not playing broly so <laughs> i know i know it's going to break some hearts but i i don't really care or i'll sell it to ding our teammate because ding will probably what? want it yeah, um I, I would bring it i would sell it to you but you gotta have money to, to buy this stuff i i yeah <laughs> Dude, I'm busy cleaning my dad's dental office for boxes of 7-Eleven. Whatever it takes, man. It's Whatever, it takes. Whatever it takes. I, I think I think this card's really good. I think it's like it's a full on. Th this is a finisher card, but I think what it does well is it's a finisher card that's very archetype specific, and I think that that's where you have to put finisher cards is in archetype specific stuff. They've effectively locked it to the two archetypes in Gogeta and Broly. Like, there's not really any other target for it outside of that that's going to be a viable target and a consistent target that you can get out. And I, I, it's, I really do think as good as 40K Double Strike is, as good as Barrier is, I think the plus 10K that goes through your turn and or your opponent's turn and the minus 5 combo power is just silly. Well, I think I mean, it's necessary, right? Because, you know, yeah. uh, playing yeah. Broly, you, you get down to, to super low life. You know, it's meant to keep you alive because a 40k double strike probably, you know, if they're at four hip, four life or something, won't end the game. So, um, I mean, it's super strong, don't get me wrong. But I think the defense is necessary because it could be a feel bad if you played it and then you swung double, they're at one life, and then they kill you, right? So, <laughs> Yeah. it's. I mean, I think it's that it's a, It's similar to... What's cool about it is it's similar to the other Broly SCR, which is basically, a, you know, you're, you build to this moment, and if you have it, then you probably win. And if you don't have it, it's very possible you lose because it, it gives you kind of like an exclamation point on the end of your, like, murder sentence where you're just, like, going at somebody with the gas pressed fully to the floor... And then you can, this is kind of like the NOS. You're just going to like flick that switch. You're probably already winning. And this is just the thing that like makes you mega win. Um, can we because... define murder sentence for the audience? I like that. No, I don't I know what it means. I, I, can't, I can't define it. I, <laughs> define, I oftentimes say things. And as in the words of Michael Scott, sometimes I don't know where the sentence is going. I just start it and see where it takes me. Uh, <laughs> I want to start using it. That was a, a murder sentence is a straight murder <laughs> sentence. This card is a murder sentence. That's what it is. It's, it's, <laughs> I uh, do wish this game had flavor text because I'd love to have the Broly SCR flavor text just be disgruntled screaming. Yeah, I, I, there are times where I, I do wish we had flavor text for stuff like this. I, I think this is like just a, it is a cool card. It's really good. It's obviously the best SCR, but I think what makes it the best SCR is that it's the best SCR inside of its own archetype even like it's not it's it's not just good in its archetype it's good overall all of its effects are crazy 
it's just nuts. And then they did a good job of, of keeping it locked and in, into the color and not letting it bleed into other decks that can abuse it, which is really, really good. I'm really happy they did. I always love when they specify original power versus like just power in general because of the ability Kid to Kid baby. Power, you know. Just our four star volley. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I, I think it's good. I, and so, so like that takes us to uh, our, our last big discussion topic, which is the archetypes coming. This one is locked into the archetype that uh, Bergy used to break Robert's heart and uh, revealed to Robert. As we would like to clarify, newer players. I think that's the thing that people missed. Is that, I've been playing um, since April. Yeah, I mean, we've 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 got like a, a we don't even combined have the time of play of the life of the game, and that's combined play time in this game. Um, and we played a lot of it in quarantine, so we played a lot of each other. We played a lot of events. We played locals whenever we could. We played a ton of locals before we got you know locked down in our our houses. But then there came the point where you know we're just playing a lot of games and we're still learning the card pool. And uh, swap is something that uh, I, I would like to point out to most people isn't good for the most part and isn't widely used. The only swap engine I ever saw was Frieza and I didn't have Godson, so I didn't know how it worked. <laughs> so like, I just, you know, I, I didn't have access to those cards. So I think the trick is like the the engine for Broly is really wild. I think to Robert's point, maybe the weirdest part is the work but get it back thing because it, it creates, it does create an issue. I, I don't love that mechanic just because when you if you pair it into a deck that overwhelms or you pair it into other effects in the game that create warp cards like now you know for technically i i can't keep two warp piles you know what i mean so i can't i can't technically according to the rules keep two warp piles so how do i keep straight the cards that went into warp and didn't like do i have to like write down notes and take pictures on my phone i just like to me that's the one thing i don't like about it is like putting cards in warp like you're going to play uh, a black deck that overwhelms a bunch of cards and plays warp. Like they put in a couple of good ar black archetypes in this set, especially like that. I think that Goku's really aggro and Broly's really aggro. So in an aggro aggro matchup where you're just overwhelming every turn and I don't get the cards back until the end of my next turn, it, it creates a weird like void of, you know, do I have to keep two separate piles? Do I turn the cards sideways? So I know which ones went to the overwhelm from you and which ones came from me and I just don't like the bookkeeping of the confusion there. You know what I mean? Especially if, like, right now we're playing a ton of untapped games or we're going to be doing, you know, we're doing webcam tournaments and stuff. And we're doing that in set 11. Like, how do you bookkeep Broly's overwhelm situation or Broly's work with the overwhelm situation, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I will say that it's a super strong effect because you get to see the cards that are in my warp that I'm going to get back mm -hmm. to hand. And, yeah, you know, no, Bergy is the king of this, being like, oh, how much combo power you got there? And I'm like, shut your face. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I... See, this is why I wish we could write things down on, like, our little, uh, what's it called, tablets. Like, in Magic, if you look at your opponent's hand, you write everything down. First but of all, I wish we could you brought that. up That'd that dumbass game again. And then second of all, <laughs> I'm going to chime Robert, in. you're gaming the secondary this, market with this, on that one. Will you... That's yo. Just because I make money on it doesn't make it a good game. Okay, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Robert's but, a pimp. Robert's but, a pimp. No, I I sell cards. That's what I do. Um, but what I'm saying is the swap mechanic. Just to go into a little bit more detail, if you swap something, you are exchanging one thing for another. All right. Oh, you aren't swapping oh, something for nothing. All right. It's not a swap. Then it's either stealing <laughs> or you're just taking. It's not an exchange. And therefore, <laughs> that entire mechanic is dumb as hell. Like, just call it so, taking maybe or <laughs> waffling because I thought I wanted to take it, but now I don't. All right? Don't call it <laughs> swap. It's good um, bullshit. Can I explain the only reason I understood why you could swap for nothing? No, because that, the, then I'm going to say this. It, I like, would have beat your ass, except you were like, oh, <laughs> I could take the five back and swap it over my four, even though I didn't have a five in the hand. And I was like, that's horseshit. That's just utter, <laughs> utter <laughs> garbage. All right. It's, it's so total horseshit. And now, because of Bergy, I don't even run negates in my deck. Because 
fuck it. I'm, I'm just trying to kill you. I don't believe in the gates anymore. He broke my brain. I'm upset. And that's why I made the Facebook post. And now everybody knows. Now? Now you can go. Okay. All right. The, all right. <laughs> the only reason I knew you could swap for nothing was because that past Saturday, um, at on um, at a local, a friend brought the original Storm deck with the uh, Vegeta. I have it right here. I can grab it actually. The explosive power one. This one, and he like built his own Storm build that he ran during the meta and ran it into my Invoker. And he did a thing where he's like, "I'm gonna swap my Bardock for nothing. I'm gonna play it again." And we're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> so that's the only reason I knew you could do it. And he was explaining how that ruling was super confusing and just came out, like, right before a tournament one time. And it was really interesting to hear about it. Yeah, and so for anybody who hears of the swap mechanic the first time, your initial reaction is, why the f*** do you get to take it back to your hand if you don't play anything? It's f***ing bull because we're all rational people. That rule is garbage. I just, I just love the idea of Robert like wanting to basically change the keyword swap, which is like nice and smooth and just four letters, to playing a card maybe and exchanging it for something possibly as like one big block of like red text on a card. I want that on a card somewhere, and like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna invest the energy as as the team graphic designer to uh, to make a whole set of swap cards where like I change the word swap as the keyword to something else so that Robert can at least have the satisfaction of seeing it like in person. Uh <laughs> Yo, you heard it here first. Put those off. I'll actually cut those. I'm, Broly, I'm wearing a shirt to the Chicago regional that will be a stupid ass Broly card. And then instead of swap, it's going to say, hey, I might take this back to my hand and I might play something else. Maybe I don't no, this is stupid. I hate this game. <laughs> That's exactly what it'll say. It'll take up. It'll be the card, and then just that as one keyword in red. It'll just be like, "This is stupid." I'm waffling like a mother. When is the Chicago regional, by the way? Uh, when COVID's I mean, over, which is never. Uh, probably, probably never in America. Dude, if I get him a school for that, that would be amazing. School so boring. You know how like other countries are like, oh, you know, we had a small wave too. We're like here in America, just being like, we're still riding the wave one. <laughs> <laughs> we're just hanging ten, baby. Yeah, that's right. We're just hanging. We can't have a second wave. <laughs> Great record for the longest wave ever. This is why we can't have nice things. So. Now that we've talked about Broly, what, are there any other archetypes that you're specifically excited for, things coming out in this set? I think one of the things that we've talked about as a team and just, like, playing the game that's interesting about this set is it feels like this set is really heavy on kind of, like, pre-built archetypes. Like, usually there's a, a two or three pre-built archetypes, but this set feels like it has a lot. Like, it has a lot of engines coming out, and I don't know if that's just... Bandai used they did a good job in the anniversary box of creating an archetype and buffing a bunch, and they're just creating a really diverse game, which is super interesting. But this set having like the Go Tanks engine, having the Broly engine, having all the Vegeta ramp stuff, it's you know they're giving you the baby engine. It's just there's a ton of stuff coming out that's like very specific to like brand kind of brand new archetypes. Like there's obviously some cards that exist in those archetypes before, but those. <laughs> Cards also have a ton of new stuff in them. I um, think there's I pros and cons, you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah. um, I like it. a lot of people are were concerned that the game was getting kind of um, overpriced, right? And I think that having new archetypes with kind of a pre-built deck, if you look at Sin Shenron, for example, it's not expensive mm -hmm. to put together. If you look at the new AOD, it's not expensive to put together. Um, and so a lot of these archetypes, at least for like the skeleton, is is really affordable. And so I think that addresses a lot of concerns that a lot of players, you know, that I, I read online um, had, which is, hey, new players are getting priced out of the game. So I think this honestly fixes um, a mm -hmm. lot of that. Uh, unfortunately, I think that it does limit deck building, which even though I'm not a great deck builder, um, I have a lot of fun kind of creating my own spice. See Yamcha, right? Um, and I think having kind of the pre-built archetypes will limit the creativity, but I will say again, you know, one of my favorite decks is Aggro Cell, and it doesn't use, um, you know, the successor engine. And so I think that over time we'll see people uh, create variants 
using the same leaders, but perhaps a different engine. And that's really exciting. But I think that it'll take time um, for people to kind of get there. And so I'm excited to see what happens. So I think that there's definitely pros and cons. I really like it as well, Mr. Broke of the team. I'm Bergy the Poor. That's my name. We're doing it. No, you're Bergy um, the Financially Stable now. Financially Stable. Yeah, because I'm, I'm financially stable until Set 11 comes out. Then I'll be poor. <laughs> I love Broly and I love Go Tanks and I need dormant potentials and I want to build Gohan and all these things. I love the fact that they've made like minor skeletons, even if it's like not the best version of the deck for new players just to build a deck and get into the game. Because you can show up to a local and be like, hey, I'm running this deck. These are the cards I have. What are cards I can use to make it better? Like showing up to Destiny, I did that, and it felt great having people just be like, oh, this card's good. Just try this stuff out. And just playing and making it your own like feeling deck. Because that's the great thing about DBS is so many different decks can be almost the same build, but just a few cards can make it feel different. Like, like I know you ran the uh, the black blocker for your Zamasu, whereas mm-hmm. Dane ran the arrival hit Goku thing, yeah. the double blocker guy. And that com- and like that changed, I think Zamasu just a little bit, like enough to mm-hmm. matter, because well, one gives double block, one also doesn't come into play tapped, so it just yeah. it leads to trade offs and personal style opinions. Like you like to more mid range, like to kill them, like to maintain being alive for four turns, and then just go in. Dane is definitely a slower player. He likes to wait a while. He loves invoke. He loves hand destruction. He loves those take my time, make sure I do everything perfect kind of decks. Yeah. I think that's just really interesting and that I'm glad they're fleshing that out a little bit more. Yeah, I think I think what's really cool about the set specific engines, more than anything even, is the fact that like you could theoretically, right, buy one box. And you wouldn't get the whole engine, but if enough of it is rare and under, it's easy to trade for it. And then when you open your box of eight SRs or whatever the number of SRs is in the set, it's totally reasonable to believe that you could find people at a local to trade all of the SRs outside of your engine for the SRs in your engine, because a lot of these engines only have one SR in them. So you can trade your rares and super rares for the things that you need. And theoretically, you could get into the game for $100, right? And then maybe you buy the box and then you have to buy a few other things. And now with some of these reprints, things like you could get the Broly engine. And if you wanted to play a little more mid range or have a little option for defense with a topo or two or three or whatever, it's totally reasonable that you could pick those cards up from somebody local that has extra because of the anniversary box now. And you could do it for a completely reasonable amount. It's totally feasible that maybe you don't get dormant potentials, but somebody can probably hook you up with a place that have shocking death balls in no time to give you some good, you know, old negates. And it it creates a game that is more new player friendly. And I think that's really important as a game ages to understand is that games that grow with a very specific player base are, are always, is are always going to have an issue long term because if players continue to leave, but you don't get new players at a higher rate, then companies do look at the financials. Whether we like to believe that or not, companies look at whether or not the game's making money. And the fact that they're giving people, you know, 70% of a deck in a set is really good because it allows people to play the game for a lower entry fee. And then hopefully those people get addicted to the game just like we do. And next thing you know, you're on the other end of the spectrum where you're like, yeah, I mean, I only bought half a case this time because I didn't think I needed a whole case this set. And, you know, it's crazy things like that where you're buying four boxes because you just, there's a couple engines you want to try in this new set. And it, it, it's a really cool way to maintain the game because it allows for new archetypes for people to try because there are people who love the, who love an old engine that's just kind of aged out and is, is the power crept over. And in these new sets, they're giving them a better version of that same kind of engine. Somebody who might have loved swap, swap the swap engines before were bad because they didn't have some of the solutions that Broly does. So now Broly is a better version of it, but you can get most of the stuff in a new set. So you don't have to have eight boxes of an old set and four boxes of a new set and two by it's, it's a really cool way to, to make the game accessible. And I think that's really cool. I think, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to try and mess around with 
some of the new um, black decks that are coming out. I, I always like to play black decks, but I think in set 10, there wasn't like a one that I really enjoyed just because like I didn't personally enjoy Vegex because I don't like playing 600 mirrors if I'm going to try and play. And I don't like decks that are 110% built for me. And that felt like a deck that basically got to the point where it's like, it's a, it's a 50 card deck and here's 49 cards for it. You can choose the last one. And it's like, do you want four Chompas or do you want an extra whatever? Hey, 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 just, didn't it, Jordan Markle play 60 cards or something in the in the Dalen oh, Mag yeah. tournament? Yeah, yeah. that's 11 People cards you got to add or something. <laughs> right. I, I just didn't, I didn't love that archetype because it felt like it, it felt too pre-built for me. And I'm, I'm excited for the new stuff because there's a bunch of Overrealm stuff and that, that's that's exciting. And, and there's benefits to the Overrealm beyond. Like the, the Overrealm, the, the, the GD units in that gets markers off of Overrealming and things like that, which is really cool. I think that, and yeah. you're more excited for the Goku leader, right? Yeah, I like the Goku leader just because, like, to your point earlier, like, I I really like to win by turn four if I can. But <laughs> I, I, I think the, the Vegeta Unison super good. I think Black Masaiyan mm-hmm. is is um, amazing. Yeah, under oh underrepresented and having it in a Unison form is kind of gross. Um, I do want to hop back just one thing that I think is kind of flying under the radar a little bit. I haven't heard or seen too many people talk about it uh and but it's the fact that they're continuing the sin shenron archetype two sets mm-hmm. running yeah uh mm-hmm. and they're i think that do it the next as well. yeah because you know they got to get all the negative all, energy all dragons <laughs> but i think it's i i think it's cool um mm-hmm. just having mm-hmm. something that you can continue to evolve over multiple sets uh to me seems fun i'm not a huge sin shenron uh, fan, so you know it doesn't appeal to me. But I would, I would love for it, you know, in the next block to continue to do something, and you know, maybe I'll get my chance at it to kind of build a deck, you know, over kind of uh, a new block and, and and keep expanding on it. Because I, I imagine if I loved Sin Shenron, I'd be, you know, flipping out, super excited with all the all the reveals for for multiple sets and. It'd be super mm-hmm. cool, at least for me. Um, I think that's something that Bandai hasn't necessarily gotten any props for or anything like that. I think it's probably because a lot of people are disappointed with, I don't even know, the Neutrino Dragon or something. He's terrible. <laughs> but no, the other one's not bad. The into, though, the champ pack one is amazing. <laughs> yeah, you only have to slot, like, yeah. nine cards for, like, garbage yeah. to get there. <laughs> um, but I, mean, I, I, think, I think that's yeah. super cool. There's only two yeah. I think it's I think it's cool that they're they're allowing like usually the engines like once they give you an engine they kind of leave it alone and you have to do a really what ends up happening is people have to run a bunch of really outside the engine cards so I think one of the things that can sometimes be disappointing for some people in this game is that there aren't cards in specific um, archetypes that like feel thematically correct like it, it doesn't it feels you don't want to build. A, a shadow dragon deck and then have to put a bunch of non shadow dragon cards. in if you really just like the cool look and theme of shadow dragons, you know? And I think that's, that's a cool thing that adding the more cards to the, that card pool does is it allows the deck to have a little more um, ebb and flow for the meta and also for players, player preference. And it allows that deck to continue to grow and evolve, but it keeps it inside the shadow dragon archetype. It lets people continue to play, a shadow dragon deck without having to play 20 cards that aren't even remotely related to it, which is pretty cool because a lot of times that's the thing that gets sacrificed at the altar of competitiveness is like theme. People just go way outside of it. Hey, hey it's Bardock cool Ape they, works in cell, right? Cause right, yeah. It, yeah. I mean, yeah. makes perfect sense. Makes perfect sense. To me. <laughs> also literally all of blue just in general, <laughs> all of blue. Universe yeah. 10 now. <laughs> I just, I just, I just want, all that matters to me is that we have creepy mustache Vegeta. I just, uh, just giving, giving us access to the, the worst, the worst, like, I know some people will like hate it, but again, apparently this has been like our, this has been our coming out party for our bomb dropping trash talking um, podcasts. And we're just throwing the fire, you know, we're throwing some gas on the fire. And uh, I, I, whether whether people like it or not, I'm, yes, there are things about GT that are great, 
but it, they're very few and far between for the most part. It's just, it's just, it's miserable to watch. It's miserable to talk about. Everything about it is wrong, and and it's proof that it's bad because as soon as a company abandons their own product and says it's not canon anymore, it tells you everything you need to know about it. We're all big Star Wars fans on this podcast and in our team, and and Star Wars has like n- n- like famously kept a ton of stuff canon that people don't agree with. And when they abandon canon, you know, it's bad. And it's the same with Bandai. Like there's so much Dragon Ball in, in the history of Dragon Ball. And they were just like, they're like, look at all this stuff we have with GT and Bandai was like, Nope, it's not worth it. <laughs> mm-hmm. just, I, it's dead. I can't oh, wait for Star paper, Wars fans GT who love legends cool. just to come and hunt there you down. Legend stuff I heard. They're going to, they're going to, they're going <laughs> to <they're gonna, laughs> find Blake. Like, Where are these outcasts at? They're going to come find you. Bring Beat you with I'm their really, with, with their fake lightsabers. Um, <laughs> on GT, GT just on paper seemed like a really interesting idea, and I think it could have been one way better. Like if you watch totally not Mark's entire review of the show, he also did one of Super and the Broly movie and all the movies. Really good channel, I highly recommend it. It's really interesting seeing like a look back as to what went wrong with it, because on paper you see things like the Shadow Dragon, and you think, wow, that's such a cool idea, very unique, very exciting. Baby on paper just seems amazing. Like SS4 is super cool looking and a nice homage to the original like big monkey. It's, it's the issue is everything fell apart and went off the rails when you like when the first time when you see Vegeta. The second Vegeta hits the screen with his like high school letterman jacket and his like flat top haircut and his gross mustache, it's like this is it. Nope, sh- we've gone off the rails. Everything from this point on is a travesty. But here's the thing: if they rebooted GT, right, and like updated the animation, you know, yeah. fixed up the, redid the story, yeah, redid the story, like cleaned up the story. They don't even, have, you know, like you could still have negative energy like, dragons. You still have baby, oh, yeah. like yeah, you, you still, know, yeah, yeah. But like if they rebooted it, you would all be on it in a hot second. <laughs> oh, well, I would because if you just I'm, I mean I'm, I'm just a whore for Dragon Ball. So it, it, it just aged. Watch, like, I, <laughs> it aged super poorly, right? You mean like everything in the '80s? It aged super poorly. <laughs> well, I feel like the original Dragon Ball didn't age that poorly. Like GT was like, you know, like real bad. I guess it was. It was yeah. Like it was real bad. Yeah, like. Dragon Ball was kept in a time capsule, and GT the was problem, like left out in the shed. Like the problem, <laughs> the problem is, they took they took the eighties and injected it into Dragon Ball, and then yeah. out came GT. <laughs> they just mm-hmm. they took eighties culture and they like they just injected it full speed into. What if Krillin was a granddad with gray hair and a mustache, and Vegeta <laughs> with a jock? Like what if what if Vegeta had a Letterman's jacket? That was like immediately they had that conversation. And things started what if Go Ten was the ultimate ladies man? Hey, every, everybody likes the baseball episode, so all all of the Z fighters the are episode, all jocks. Are you talking about Super? That's all that yeah, of Super. That's, like, it, that's the best episode. This is, yeah, this hands is down. Episode. This is my this is my plea. This is my plea to Bandai from now until eternity. Bring back the theme booster one time and give me cards themed entirely around the baseball episode i but just the driving want, episode i just want but no, i just baseball want the so dragon, much better. but the baseball one's so much better i just love the idea of like the wolf thing pitch i just want yamcha and then i want cards where like yamcha's just like laid on the base pads because every time he tried to take a base he got beat up it's just it's Dude, it's magic they could uh, they could totally make it like magic did where it was like all thirds of the cards like you buy a box and you just get alternate versions of these yep. cards and packs like alternate wolf fang fist would be wolf fang pitch or yep. the kaioken that wipes the board would just be goku at bad or something all right like i'm not gonna lie cool. i'm kind of in on that because i really did like the godzilla <laughs> magic <laughs> cards yeah the godzilla yeah yeah, like, yeah. minus my we, stupid sprite dragon yeah your godzilla we, we've, sucks. Come up, we've come up with the perfect this this has been the perfect episode we brought heat we had robert doing a tribute and, and, and honoring his debt payment. We talked about uh, Unison's Robert went off the rails on Bergie a little bit because he broke his heart <laughs> and then he destroyed the swap. Yo, I, can't I, think I legit this. don't run the gates anymore, all right? No, I am live or we, die we by turn two. There like, are no negates. There's no negates. And also, I'm kind of pissed off at Blake because Tag Team Trunks is f- awesome. <laughs> and Blake's oh just like, oh yeah, you should have added that in a long time ago. And I'm like, the f- <laughs> I can't wait because Dane's just gonna have to be like beep 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 beep. 
I feel like I feel like this has been a good this is this has been a high quality episode for for joy and fun, and I hope that uh, our good pal Other Dane enjoys this episode because we've we've given him a lot of things to laugh at and tease us about, and that's okay. I think this has been a good episode. I think we had a lot of fun and a lot of laughs. I think we talked about a lot and covered a lot, but uh, I don't know about you guys, but I think we can call it a night and we'll say thanks to everyone for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the episode. We hope you had some fun and some laughs and we hope you join us next time. Make sure you share and um, let everyone know that Robert paid his penance to Dane and gave it his all and uh, Bergie and I just giggled like idiots and we hope you enjoyed <laughs> all of the obscenities that Dane had to edit out of this podcast. And lots of fun. We hope you subscribe, follow. Uh, we're getting ready to do a deck profile here coming up in the next uh, week. I'm going to do it with our boy Dane. Had a sweet top 16 Dende Wish Rangers deck that we actually have talked about before. So we're going to get that out to you guys because I think it's a super fun deck. And uh, we hope you join us again. We'll see you here in a couple of weeks talking about more fun, more spoilers. And probably then we'll be talking about the ban list. So get ready for that. Thanks for joining us, guys. Ban list. Can't wait. Bye. Thanks for watching. Peace.